Yes, madam. Yes, we teach every possible form of dancing. Ballroom, tap, ballet, rhythmic, hula, and jitter. That's it, girls. That's it. Remember, gracefulness is everything. Now, London Bridge. <laughs> Wonderful. What's it called? That is called the Dance of the Pelican. <laughs> My own original creation. Now, girls, we'll try some bar exercise. Right over here. Let's have it right this time. Now, you just got to follow me and do exactly as I do. Now, you put your right foot up on the top like that. Now, one, two. One, two. Now, the other foot. Hey, Trudy, come and get me. What's the matter? I think I'm stuck. <laughs> hey, girls, come and help. Wait a minute, you better go get Ollie. All right. Yeah, he's getting me off. Make it snappy. Oliver! Stanley's stuck to the wall. What a game. All right, guys, relax. I'll be right back. You're always sticking your foot into something. What's the matter now? I think I've got Charlie's horse. Get me out of here, will you? All right, girl, stand back. One, two, three. I'm sorry, Ollie, I couldn't help it. You see, it was... Missed. Listen, boys, we gotta get a new setup. The FBI has closed down on all rackets, and the snatch now gets you throat trouble. Well, I've got a new angle. What do you think of that? We never should have told him he looks like Eddie Robinson. From now on, we're strictly on the legit. We got a new front. We're going to sell insurance. What do we know about selling insurance? You used to sell protection, didn't you? Well, what is insurance but a form of protection? See? You're going to sell insurance just the same way you used to sell protection. And if the chump doesn't kick in, you give him the muscle the way you used to when he wouldn't play ball. If there's any belts from the prospect, the proper guys at headquarters will take care of things. This is no two-bit racket. We'll divide up the towns in the state, and you'll work the towns in pairs. I got these wholesale. One of you guys will act as a salesman, the convincer. The other will use this. He's the croaker that makes the examination and certifies the poor chump as being a sound insurance risk. Any questions? Mickey, you draw Chambersburg. You can take Jasper along with your croaker. Croaker? I'll show you how to use it later, Pinhead. And you, hand me the goat, 
You're going to Danville. And don't forget to tell him that you'll be around in person each month to collect the payments. You make me sick. Well, we've all got to live and learn, you know. Yes, but you just live. Well, I can't help it. Come in. Hello, boys. Hello, Hello Trudy. I just thought I'd drop in and pay my tuition in advance for three months. Gee, that's swell. I don't know what we'd do without you, Trudy. You know, you're practically keeping the school open. The rest of the students are putting us on the cuff. Oh, well, that's terrible. And you know, this morning we got a nasty letter from the landlord and a very ugly letter from the furniture man. Look, I'll show you. He said... Uh, by the way, Trudy, have you seen Grant lately? I'm going to see him in a few minutes. Mother's waiting down below. We're going out to the plant. Give him our best, won't you? Oh, I will. You know, Grant did a great turn for us once. A friend in need. He's a friend in need. Indeed. Goodbye, boy. Goodbye, Trudy. Goodbye. A friend in... <laughs> I'll put this in the safe. What's the combination to this thing? Two turns to the left. One, two. What do you mean, two turns to the Hold left? Hold this a minute. One, two. Two turns to the left. It'll be safer here. Two. See? One good turn deserves another. One good turn deserves another. <clears throat> Good afternoon, gentlemen. We'd like to see the boss. Which one? We'd like to see both of them. Well, they're both very busy. Mr. Hardy has an afternoon class in hula dancing. Now, look, lady, we don't feel like being argued with. Mr. Hardy can let the hula dancers wait around and twiddle their thumbs. <laughs> Shut up. But get him. Really? I said get him. You gotta be fun with these tomatoes. But they insist on seeing both you and Mr. Laurel at once. Uh, not income tax. No, I don't think so. Uh, we haven't got time. We're busy. Oh, Mr. Hardy, I think you'd better see them. They're... Well, they won't take no for an answer. In fact, they intimidated me. They did? Well, you throw them out. And if you have any trouble, send them for me. All right, I will. The idea of intimidating you. Tell us I'll never you stand... Uh, did you wish to see me? I'm Mr. Halligan, Professor. This is my associate, Dr. Jasper. I'm Mr. Hardy, and this is my partner, Mr. Laurel. How do you do? How do you do? How's everything? Everything is fine. Well, that's... Uh, oh. It's a pretty nice layout you got here. Uh, I'm glad you approve of it. Doing a tremendous business, I hear. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh -huh, you're just the sort of people we like to meet. Oh, yeah. People are turn this away, aren't they? They uh, uh, my car. Oh. The Last Mile Insurance Company. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I'm sorry, but we do not need any insurance. Oh, yes, you do. No, no, we don't. Oh, yes, you do, and you're going to have it, understand? We do not. N-O, ought, not. Look, you got a nice little joint here. You wouldn't want anything to happen to it, would you? Why not? I mean, why would we? Well, if you don't take out insurance and have the proper protection, accidents might happen. That's right. For one thing, the joint might burn down. Gee, that'd be awful. Suppose there was an explosion. Suppose your partner here broke an arm or a leg. You mean to say you get paid for things like that? Plenty. Oh, well, if you get money for it, it's okay with me. I don't want the place to burn down. We wouldn't have money to pay for it. Could I speak to you privately just a moment? How much does he get if he breaks an arm? $5,000. And a leg? $10,000. Uh, and if he loses an eye, that's $25,000. What did he say? He says if you break an arm, you get $5,000. Huh. A leg, $10,000. Gee, that's a lot of money. It certainly... Will you sit down a moment? We are talking privately. Now, in the event that he breaks his neck... Well, that makes you the beneficiary for the full amount. $100,000. $100,000.
It's a deal. Okay, Doc, do your stuff. Maybe it's a foul system. Pricey, ticking like a clock. It's not a clock, it's a watch. You're cute. Now for the old pump. Excuse me. Pipey, cross your legs. Pipey. A perfect specimen if I ever saw one. All right, Professor, if you'll just sign right here. Yes, sir. That'll be $100, the first premium on the policy. All right, sir. I have it right here. There Thank you are. are. That makes it legal. Oh, thank you. Now, we'll be back in the third of next month. And that dough had better be ready. Or else. All right, sir. I'll have it for you. Goodbye. Long. Oh, that soft touch, eh? Perfect. Like taking candy from a baby. Come on, boys. The rest of your waiting for you down the headquarters. Hey, what is this? Yeah, uh, you sign right here. We're in the legitimate racket. Cross your legs. I need. Harder. Oh. Good day, Mrs. Harlan. How do you do, John? Miss Tootie. Hello. You mean you didn't recognize the great Lawrence personality? <laughs> How's your invention coming? Oh, swell, Trudy. The invisible ray is almost finished. It'll burn everything it hits to the ground. A new type of weapon that'll revolutionize jungle warfare. Why, that's marvelous. <laughs> Say, what are you doing at the plant? Oh, we're picking up Father. He and Mother are leaving on the evening plane for Washington. Oh. I thought you might be interested in the fact that uh, I'd be alone tonight. I mean, without that George Worthing around? Now, Grant. I'll tell you what to do. You pick up Stanley and Oliver, and we'll have a party in the roughest room. Okay. Be there at 8 sharp. The folks will be gone by then. Swell. Oh, oh, here comes your father and George Worthing. Duck, quick. I'll see you later. Our trip to Washington is very important, George. But what happens if uh, Washington approves our merger? Well, you automatically become vice president. And I hope my son-in-law. Now here's an example. This obsolete boiler. Which... Oh! Oh, you clumsy fool. Can't you watch it? You? I might have suspected it. I think he did it on purpose. I assure you. Well, at last, I have an excuse for firing you. Oh, Mr. Harlan. Get out of here. Come along. With me. Isn't that nice of her to leave the door open for us? Yeah. Well, we're right on time. Mm-hmm. Oh, Trudy! We're here. What is that? It must be the radio, Mother. I'll go down and turn it off. Did you get the potato salad? Yeah, and I got the succotash and the balami. I think it's in that bag, right? Balami. Hi, Trudy. Shh. The folks haven't left yet. Come back later. Here comes Father. He better not find you here. Hide, quick! In here! I've got my pipe. Oh, I'll get it for you, Daddy. Never mind. I'll get it. Where did I leave that pipe? Um, let me see. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Hurry, 
you, Dad. You'd be late for your plane. Goodbye, pretty dear. Goodbye, Mother. Come on. Yeah. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Daddy. Oh, oh Jason, you'll be late for your plane. Daddy, goodbye. Bye. Killed him. And most likely he's shot both of you. Yeah, I noticed he's got a lot of guns over there. Oh, yes, father's a crack shot. He's won a lot of trophies. How about a drink? My nerves are all shot. You know that? <laughs> After that, I wish we had something stronger than ginger ale. It's a good thing you didn't get anything stronger. Father won't have any liquor in the house. Well, you boys make yourselves at home. We're going out and fix supper. Say, Trudy, I brought you some chrysanthemum mums. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you, Stanley. I'm glad you like them. Chrysanthemum mums. Where'd you get them? I got them out of her garden. You know, she's got the most beautiful flowers that you ever saw. In fact, uh... some glasses on it. Give it to me. I'll open it. until it won't hold another thing. <sighs> Gee, what a swell home. Yeah, he has a radio. Boy, look at that library. I wonder if they have Superman or Dick Tracy. Johnson. Gee, I bet that's interesting. Yeah, I remember the day that Jess Willard knocked him out. It sure was a hot day. Gee, I'll, I'll have to read that. Must be a swell book. <laughs> say, didn't Trudy's old man say that he wouldn't have any liquor around the house? Yeah. Well, there's a bar here with whiskey and everything. Where? Right here. Boy, your nerves certainly are shot. You sit down and I'll get you some music to soothe them. Now just relax. causing a pressure on your head. Bar. <laughs> okay, boys, food's on. Oh, come God. on, man, dig in. Thank yeah, you, Trudy. You're welcome. Say, Trudy, didn't yes? you say your father wouldn't allow any liquor in the house? That's right. Well, I just saw a bar over there as big as that bookcase, full of whiskey and Stuff and things and everything. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Stanley. Don't mind him, Trudy. He's not feeling well lately. He's been overdoing the dance of the pelican. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll pardon me, Trudy, but I think that you're sitting on my hat. Oh! <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's I'll... all right. 
I'm awfully sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Here you are. You had no priorities on your bookings, and at the last minute, the Army took over your seats. But it's essential that we get to Washington. We're on government business. I'm very sorry, but three officers have to go east tonight. Well, why the devil did you give us the reservations in the first place if you can't deliver them? I'm very sorry. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, pretty be surprised when we return. Uh -huh. Come along, George, and spend the evening with us. Yes, do. Trudy will be so happy to see you. <laughs> Trudy, that was delicious. Yeah, the Balami was swell. I'll put the dishes away, and then we'll have fun. Good. Say, how about opening a bottle of ginger ale and let's raise some dickens? Sounds like a good idea. I think it is, too. Then maybe we can play some pound ping. We'll really have a lot of... Open this, Oliver. I don't care for any. Well, Here, I'll open it. Okay. But... is that to puzzle? The bottles are warm. They should be put in the icebox. It's a good idea. Here. Now put them in the icebox. world happened to you? Oh, I was trying to open a bottle of ginger ale and it slipped. Look at me, I'm soaked. Well, I might as well go home. Oh, don't go home, Grant. Take them off and I'll dry them for you. Okay. Oh, I'll do it, Ollie. You bring them into the kitchen for me and I'll have them ready in a jiffy. All right, take them off, Grant. Stanley, what in the world are you doing? Well, Ollie told me to put them in the icebox. No, no, Stanley, in here. Oh, pardon me, I don't know. It's all right. Oh, Stanley, I'm sorry. You want them pressed? Never mind the pressing, just get them dry. <laughs> oh, why don't you be careful? Well, why didn't you knock? I didn't know. Oh, you. knock. Did you see him push me? I certainly did. You know what I'm going to do? No, what? When he does it again, the first thing I'll... You'll do what? I'll push you back. <coughs> Why, you... No, no, boys, not here. Well, it's a good thing you interfered. Is that so? Yes. Come on outside. All right. The harder they fall, the bigger I am. Come and see this. You come right You now. stay here. I'll be right back. I'll show you. Remember, you asked for this, you little pipsqueak. That settles it. You bet it's... I'll show you. Now, put up your hands and fight like a man. Here comes our old man. Oh, no, 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 no. There's too many guns in there. Oh. Upstairs. I'm going up to change my things. I'll see you later. We'll be in the rumpus room, dear. I caught a place here. This is my sanctum sanctorum. I had no idea you made such a hobby of marksmanship. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is an elephant gun with which I won the Edwin K. Spilsbury trophy last hey, month. That's your beauty, isn't it? Look. What the blazes? 
business are you doing here? Why, Mr. Harlan, we thought, well, that is, I understood you'd gone to Washington. Oh, and you thought you'd take advantage of my absence to call on my daughter, knowing how I feel about you. I should think your dismissal this afternoon was a pretty strong hint. When the cat's away, the mice will play, is that it? Uh, Mr. Harlan, Trudy invited me here when she was at the plant this oh, afternoon. Oh, she did, eh? Sit down. I want to talk to you. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Holland, I'd rather stand. You see, I've been standing, uh, sitting at the plant all day. Well, you won't have that trouble in the future. I should think you'd have sense enough to keep away from my daughter. Ah! Oh. Ah! What's the meaning of this? I got my pants wet. Oh. You what? Oh, uh, we were having a little supper and I spilled something on them. Why don't you call the police? Brad, here's your pants. Oh. Why, who did? Young lady, what's the meaning of this? I always understood, Father, I had the privilege of inviting anyone to this house that I wished. I know, Trudy, dear, but at least with their pants on. Oh, Mother. Why, are they back already? Yeah. My, my. What a fast world we are living in. Well, that's enough from you. Go on, sir. Get out. I'll see you later, Trudy. Just a minute, Grant. If I ever catch you hanging around Trudy again, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Sit down. Ah! How will we ever live this down? Well, what is it, my dear? Why, this. Wentworth? There was a bar there. A bar? Yes. Why? Uh... Now, don't tell me I saw it. Well, my dear, you've had a very trying evening, and I think you should... Oh, I can't stand any more. I'm so strong. <laughs> Cute gadget, Dad. Now, Trudy. So this is the reason for your sanctorum. Trudy, my dear, we've always been pals. It's up to you to understand. Oh, I do. And I know you'll understand about Grant, won't you? I think you'd better go to bed, too. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Mr. Worthen. Good night. Well, George, I could use a drink. How about you? Yeah, I could use one, too. interesting invention. He shoots an invisible ray. Well, how do you know this? Well, I've had a couple of men watching him for some time now. Is that so? Yeah, I've been waiting until he runs out of money, and then I intend to step in and grab it. You must come in with me. If what I hear about is the truth, there's a fortune in it. Sounds interesting. He's just about ready to give it a test. I'll let you know all about it. snoring. If anybody's snoring in this room, it's you. I never snore. Shh. Don't you shush me. If there's anything I hate, it's a shusher. Oh, shush. Oh.
I shouldn't have taken that last drink. at the school, they'd better be at home. Now, darling, don't be too hard on the boys. Remember, after all, Stanley did teach me the Roomba. Yeah, if anything would strengthen my decision, that would. They're gonna pay that rent on that dancing school, or out they go. Well, we're certainly glad to hear it, Grant. See you later. Goodbye. Who was it? It was Grant. Did he die? How could he die when I was just talking to him? Well, he was shot. I heard it myself. Oh, come on, let's get the house cleaned up. Answer that. Hello? Hello? Who was it? Must have been wrong number. There was nobody answered that. Hello? It's the doorbell, stupid. I'm sorry, Stanley. That's all right, Ollie. I knew I couldn't be that stupid. I'll answer it. Hello. It's the doorbell, stupid. Oh, thank you. What do you mean, stupid? Of course. <laughs> Academy? Why, I have no recollection of it, sir. Sure, we got it two days ago, Doug. Oh, you? you did, did you? And you have allowed 48 hours to elapse without even making any attempt to rectify the matter? Well, you see, it's like this. Gentlemen, I wish to hear no more excuses. If the rent isn't paid by 12 noon today, you are dispossessed, evicted, thrown out. What about our dancing pupils? I imagine the world will still wag on just the same. You're a hard man, Mr. Featherstone. I'm a man who wants his rent. 12 o'clock, noon, today. What did he say? 12 o'clock, noon, to. You heard what he said. What do you want to tell him I got the letter two days ago for? Well, you did. I know it. Well, why don't you pay him? Because I haven't got the money. What do you mean, you ha We've got $300 in the bank. That's our nest egg, and I'm not drawing it out, and that is final. All right, have it your own way. Let him throw us out. I don't care. Only I had a pelican class this afternoon, might have made a few dollars. But if you feel that way about it, let it go. I don't mind starving again. It's all right with me. You know, you can't keep an egg in two baskets. That's silly. Unless you scramble them. I wouldn't be that stupid. You know, I knew a fellow once that he had some money in the bank and he wouldn't draw it out. And you know what? He lost his job. And still he wouldn't draw it out. Then he starved to death. That killed him. And then he died. And after he was dead, a friend of his got all the money and he drew it out of the bank. And I could live happily ever after. Yes, sir. All right, I'll draw the money out of the bank. Come on. Now, we'll go down and give that guy's rent. And at the same time, I'll give him a piece of my mind. Yeah, and give him another piece of your mind for me, too. Ladies and gentlemen, right this way to the greatest auction of the year. Step right inside, folks. On the inside, for the first time, we are giving away something absolutely free on the inside. Absolutely free. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely.
absolutely free on the inside, folks. You mean sell it for nothing? Yes, sir, right on the inside, absolutely free, folks. Absolutely free on the inside. 25 twice. 25 three times. Sold $25. Good morning, gentlemen. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have here one of the finest pieces in our entire collection. This 18th century grandfather's clock. Now, what am I offered? Who'll start it? I will. One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars has been. One hundred. Ladies and gentlemen, do you mean to say that I am only offered one hundred dollars for this very rare piece? This magnificent clock? A hundred and ten. A hundred and ten. A hundred and ten. Do I hear in advance? A hundred and ten. A hundred and twenty is big. A hundred and thirty. A hundred and thirty, this lady says. A hundred and thirty. A hundred and thirty. A hundred and forty. A hundred and forty. A hundred and forty. A hundred and forty. Ladies and gentlemen, is that all I'm bid? A hundred and forty. Let me get you the history on this clock and read it to you. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There's something wrong, lady. Yes, I've got my heart set on that clock, and I've just found out that I've left my money and my checkbook at home. Gee, that's too bad. Oh, will you do me a favor by keeping the bidding open? I don't care what the price. If you will, I'll make it worth your while. And I'll give you my, uh, free gift. Why don't you help her out? She'll make it worth your while. We can pay the rent and have some money left over. Then with our two gifts, we'll have three for nothing. I'll be glad to keep the bidding open for you, lady. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back. Take your time. The history of this fine clock, ladies and gentlemen, dates back more than 200 years. 150. 150 dollars. 160. 160. 170. 170. 170. 180. 180. 180. 190. 190, the lady bitch. 190. 190. 200. 200. 210. 210. 210. 220. 220. 230. 230 dollars has been. 250. 200. 260. 260 dollars. 280. 280. 290. 290 dollars has been. 295. 295. 290. 300. Sold to the cheerful gentleman for 300 dollars. 400. What are you bidding against me for? And now, sir, in appreciation of your good taste in purchasing this clock, we are presenting to you absolutely free, our capital gift of the day, this lucky cat. Hey. Will you take the clock with you, or shall we deliver it? Uh, we'll wait for the lady, if you don't mind. Then will you kindly step over to the cashier? Here's your receipt. That'll be $300. Our next offering, ladies and gentlemen, is a very rare piece. A genuine Chippendale chair, direct from England. Now, who'll start the bidding on this? I will. $100. $100 has bid. $100. Ladies and gentlemen, you mean to say that's all I'm bid for this magnificent thing? $100? $110. $110. $110. $120. $120. $120. $120. $120. when you get through. Okay. Come in. Good morning, boys. Hello, Trudy. Hello, Trudy. I have something very important to discuss with you. All right. Sit down. Thank you. Not you. Sit down, Trudy. Thank you, Oliver. 
Now, what is it? You boys believe that Grant has a great future as an inventor, don't you? Well, I believe that Grant will be an inventor of the first rank. What's rank? You are. Shut up. Proceed, dear. Well, I was thinking, if we could keep Grant in the background for the present, have someone else demonstrate the invisible ray, and when Father became wildly enthusiastic, we could spring it on him that Grant was the real inventor. Then everything would be fine. Couldn't do it, couldn't we, Ollie? We'd do anything for Grant. And we like you, too. <laughs> I think the invisible ray would be sensational. The vacuum cleaner was, wasn't it? Was it? Was it? I said, was it? Do you mean to say that you've never seen Grant's vacuum clean in operation? No. Let's show it to her. Indeed we will. We use it all the time. Yeah. Wait till you see this. Yeah. Just sit over this there. This is really something. Yeah. Let's, let's do All ready? Now, we'll dirty it up a little. Well, let's make it good and dirty. All right. How about a little of this one? All right. All right. There we are. Now, some of that there. Now, we'll get started. Oh, wait just a minute. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. Might as well do it good. Wait till you see, see this. Yeah. That's really something. Yeah. Yes, sir. We fix this up for you. Hey. <laughs> there, you think that'll be enough? No, no. Yes. Just a minute. What? We'll put some of these feathers down. Uh, you know, yeah. feathers are the hardest things in the world. Sure. Back this will show you how good it That's is. Right. Really something. There we are. That'll be enough. Yeah. I think that's all right, don't you, yeah. Ollie? That's all right. Now, I'll even pick that bag up. Yes, sir. Now, you just watch this. All right, Stanley, go ahead. I'll get you in here. There we are. Now, now. turned off the electricity this morning. <laughs> you know, this is hard to get set. You have to turn the handle. You've got the easiest part of the whole thing. All you've got to do is remember what Grant told you this morning, and I'll do the rest. What? Aim the machine at the target and oh. hit it. What, in the middle? Yes, in the middle. That's easy. And remember, you can't speak a word of English. Yes, I can. No, just pretend that you can. Oh, well, I'll... Here they come now. I sure hope the boys don't muff things. So do I. <laughs> Right over here, gentlemen. Right over here. I'm Mr. Harlan. I'm Mr. Hardy. This is Professor Fen Dash Gorp, the great inventor from Puliweo. <laughs> Unfortunately, the professor does not speak a word of English. This is my board of directors. Gentlemen. Uh, what is the uh, principle of your invention? Uh, well, I'm not the inventor. Professor Fendash Gorp is the inventor. I'm merely his American associate. Morakasinte uh, Probakasa. Nepanumini no. Hmm. Uh, you've heard of the flames that come out of the mouth of Vesuvius? Yes. You've also heard of the cow that kicked over the lamp that started the fire that burned the great metropolis? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the professor says that this machine is much more devastating. But what is the principle involved? <laughs> That's a secret the professor's not even divulged to me. Very well. Proceed with your demonstration. Morocente, Gorobositi, Morocose. Well, look up, Mr. Kalaf. What is it? Stop. What strange glasses? Uh, that's another one of the professor's inventions. His blackout glasses. But you don't wear dark glasses in the blackout. Mm -hmm. No, but he uses them to practice with in the daytime. But what's one of the glasses doing out? Uh, Moniki Nanasa. 
Ulrich is it? A smorgasbord. Yes, to see where he's going. <laughs> now, if you gentlemen will be seated, we'll proceed with the demonstration. Thank you. Come on, I say. Oh. Might I speak to you a moment, Mr. Harlan? Oh, don't bother me now. I'm busy. Very good, sir. It's a most wonderful invention. I'm glad sir. you like oh, it. Oh, my sins don't work. It's a lot of fun. What was it, he said? He said he was very pleased with it. Don't empty them. Oh, Stanley, why didn't you shut it off? I don't know. I can't speak English. Oh, look, you've ruined my machine. Mr. Harlem, this is really most important. Well, what is it? Your house is on fire. What? Good grief, call the fire department. Alakazam Bazooka, Schmorgersborg. <laughs> Schmorgersborg. You silly puzzle brain nincompoop. Well, it wasn't my fault the machine blew up. What do you mean it wasn't your fault? Why didn't you turn it off? Well, Grant showed me how to start it, but it didn't tell me how to stop it. How was I to you know? You remember this. Everything you start, you stop the same way. Everything. Not everything. For instance? Well, uh, a horse. To start it, you go... And to stop it, you say, whoa. And it stops. S-T-O ops stops. That is neither here nor there. Where? The oh. Gee, I wish there was a way to raise some money. How much did he say he needed? Just a mere $10,000. Too bad he didn't have the machine insured. Then he would have been able to get the money and have a new one fixed up without any trouble at all. Stanley, you've given me a brilliant idea. Have I? I believe that I have a way to raise some money for Grant. Swell. Let's take a walk. Where are you going? To raise some money for Grant. Gee, that's a great idea. Won't he be surprised? Wait a minute. Hey, mister. Yes, sir. How much bananas? Five cents a pound. Let me have a pound. Yeah. Hey, Arthur. Come on. Street. Uh, I think you better go over to Flight Street. You better. Uh, just a minute. Hi. Let's you and I take a little walk.
Help me up. Hold that. surprise for you. Well, I've had several today. The blueprints of a young friend's invention. Well, how'd you get them? Bit of money changed hands. That's just a duplicate set. You'll never miss them. Is that so? The way I figure it now is the time to step in. His two friends have ruined his machine. He hasn't got a dime. And he'll probably sell out the whole works for a couple of hundred. You think so? Well, if he doesn't, we'll have the new blueprints redrafted, make a few minor changes, and tell him to go jump in the lake. You think we should steal these plans from this boy? Steal is a pretty ugly word, Mr. Harlan. I don't like your dealings, Worthing. You're a crook. Well, you needn't be offensive, sir. I'm trying to be. And for your information, I'm going to finance that young man. Going to double-cross me, huh? Get out. Very well. That's the way you want it. <laughs> Say, that's dangerous. Somebody's liable to get hurt. They certainly they might. Move those things and let them... Hey! What? Wait here for me. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm going to try and raise some money for Grant. Oh, well, don't be long. I won't. And good luck. Yeah, you wait here now. I'll wait right here for you. I hope you get it. Have an accident? No, thanks. I just had one. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, how did you have your accident? Well, it sounds kind of silly, but I stood up on a roller coaster. Roller coaster? Yeah. Didn't hurt much. A couple of weeks in the hospital. I'll be all right soon. Uh, did you have any insurance? Did I? I collected a nice little bundle. Thank you. We're going to the beach. What? We're going to the beach. I can't hear you. I say... Come on. Two, please. Hey! Let's go up on top and smooth the riding. That's a good idea. And you can read the signboards to me, too. Going. We're going to the beach. What for? To raise some money for Grant. Oh. Say, after we get the money, how about let's go and fishing? All right. Do you know a good place? Sure, I know a swell place. You go through a fence along the beach, which has a sign on it, and it says private. And you go through a gate, which has another sign, which says keep out. And you go further along the beach, you come to another sign, and it says, no fishing. That's the place to fish. They come about that <coughs> far. Everything. Dad knew the machine was yours all the time. He's terribly impressed. He's going to back you. What? That's right. And George Worthing was going to steal your invention. Daddy told him to get out of the house and stay out. Oh, 
I can't believe it. Don't you see what it means to us? Do I? Say, we've got to tell Stanley and Oliver. They're sitting around brokenhearted. I've got my car outside. Come on. Okay.
and this is what happened. That's terrible. If only we could have found you in time. Well, Ollie, hurry up and get well. And if you need anything, call on me. I sure will. Not you. Thank you, Grant and Trudy. So long, Ollie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye, Trudy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Stan. Goodbye, Stan. Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye. Oh. Come in. I went out by mistake. Will you sit down and stop eating my fruit? And take your head off. Oh. Don't you feel well? My foot's gone to sleep. Is there anything I can do to make you comfortable? What are you whispering about? I didn't want to wake your foot up. Oh.